Happinators and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, welcome as well. And if you like to subscribe, please do so below so that you don't miss any updates from my channel. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for your support. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna talk about the big button hat. Um, I chose to use the color pink. Um, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We all know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I know that this uh, disease has affected many of us on personal levels, but I thought because many of us are gonna be doing cancer walks and things of that nature, if you live in a cooler climate, I thought this hat would be great um, to show off your pink support. Um, also, it features a cute little button uh, flap here, and you can use any button that you choose to use, and if you have something that's uh, geared towards breast cancer, I think a great little decal uh, button would be cute here as well. This is a very quick and easy uh, knit project. You can have it done in an hour to two hours, and I thought that um, this would be something that would you guys could wear throughout the winter time, and like I said, it's a quick, easy project. This is the color Blossom, uh, with the Lime brand quick wool, I think, yeah, wool thick and quick um, blossom color. So if you'd like to learn how to knit this hat, please stay tuned. Thank you. So for this pattern, I'm going to use the Wool Ease Thick and Quick um, yarn from the Lime brand collection, but you can use whatever yarn you have available that is a size uh, six, uh, super bulky. I'm also going to be using a pair of uh, double pointed needles that are not pictured row counters and stitch markers and i'm going to use size 11 and size 13 needles um, pictured here are the circular needles but i'll be using part of it as uh, straight needles and i'm going to switch to a size 13 for the body of the hat but you can continue with whatever size needle that you're going to be using also a cute button of your choice a darning needle and a pair of scissors and if you need some thread for your button because your yarn won't go through the buttonholes, that would also be a great idea as well. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that the color of this yarn is called Blossom. So we're gonna start this pattern off by casting on 52 stitches. This pattern is called the Big Button Hat by Amy Devendak. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. Um, it is on uh, Ravelry and it is also on her blog post. So I would put a link to both of those in the description box below. So I'm using the long tail cast on to cast on the 52 stitches. I will leave a link up in the uh, video for you in case you need a refresher course on how to do the long tail cast on. So what I like about this pattern is that it's gonna probably take about maybe um, an hour, an hour and a half uh, to get this hat finished. So if you're looking for a quick project, I would highly recommend this one. Um, and the idea behind this is the cute little button flap. Um, and it gives you a little bit of variety in order to be able to pick the button that you want to show off and showcase on your hat. So we're going to start with row one of the hat and I am going to just basically be knitting back and forth. Um, this is basically garter stitch for the first eight to ten rows and you can decide how thick you want your flap to be. Um, I went ahead and used um, only eight rows because I didn't want my flap to be quite as thick. And basically you are going to knit, um, like I said, the first uh, eight to ten rows just back and forth. Um, without joining in the round. So we are back and I am on the last row for me, uh, row eight, and I'm going to just continue um, to the end of the row and then I'll show you what to do next. So this is what it looks like once you've completed your eight uh, to 10 rows. So just simple garter stitch. 
So now the pattern tells us to bind off seven and then knit to the end of the row. So we're only going to bind off the first seven stitches of the pattern. So this is going to be our first bind, bind off. So you just start counting one and you go to the next one and you bind off that particular stitch. So that counts as two. So you do this until you have gotten to seven stitches. And as a reminder, we want to make sure that we are binding off these seven stitches loosely because if you bind them off too tight, they'll probably have a tendency to curl and you don't want that. You want your flap to lay flat where you're going to uh, sew on your button. So the seven stitches have been bound off. So now we are going to just knit to the end of the row. So now we finished that row. So now it's time for us to join our project in the round and if you started out on straight needles this is where you would grab your circular needles and start with those but since i started with circular needles there's no need for me to switch out needles at this point so now you want to grab your stitch marker because we want to mark the beginning of the round so let's just slip this the stitch marker onto our needles and literally it's just as easy as just inserting the needle and starting to knit and now you have joined your two uh, ends together. So you will just continue to knit all the way around and you will be done with joining. This is the joining row or the joining round. So you'll be done with that and then you can start knitting the 15 rows uh, that the pattern calls for next. So now we're done with the joining round and we're going to knit the 15 rows that the pattern calls for. But I'm going to switch to size 13 needles because I need uh, my hat to be a little bit larger in the circumference around uh, my particular uh, for my particular size hat. So you guys, if you want to keep knitting with the size 11 needles, you can do so. But I know I've knitted this pattern before, so I'm just going to go up one size uh, for, for comfort purposes. So go ahead and complete your 15 rounds of straight knitting and we will see you back at the end. So here we are back after we have completed the 15 rounds of uh, straight knitting around and so we're going to switch to double pointed needles um, you use the double pointed needles the size that you have knit the main hat in 
and we are going to have to use double pointing needles because we're going to start doing the decreases and as we decrease the circumference of the hat is going to get smaller and smaller and we're not going to be able to use circular needles anymore unless you are comfortable with the magic loop method and you started out with uh, circular needles that had a longer cord to them but in this case i'm just going to go ahead and switch to uh, double pointed needles because I'm comfortable with those but you do whatever method use whatever method you are comfortable with so I'm basically now going to transfer uh, my stitches to um, the needles uh, and you do this based on just dividing out your stitches evenly um, I got distracted with needle one and ended up putting more stitches on there than I needed to but I adjusted for it, at, it later but you are basically on the first round of decreases you're going to knit seven and you're going to knit two stitches together and that's going to be your first decrease and you're going to continue that pattern all the way around for this row what I suggest is after you do your knit twos, place a stitch marker um, after, after your knit two because that way you don't have to count on the next decrease row. You're always going to end up decreasing the two sti stitches prior to your stitch marker. So that kind of helps you out uh, if you don't want to can have to continue to count. Just remember that after each of your, that right before each of your stitch markers, you are going to decrease two stitches together so i've placed my first stitch marker so now you notice that um, you will continue around just continue placing stitch markers after you have knit your two together So when you get to the last needle of uh, your knit, your decrease row, you're going to decrease the last two uh, stitches together and you're not going to be able to place a stitch marker um, on that particular needle because the needle, the stitch marker, marker, marker would actually fall off. So just keep that in mind. So after each decrease row, you're going to do a complete knit even row until you get down to um, where the pattern is going to just decrease after each row. So if you are new to knitting or uncomfortable with knowing where your first needle is after you've uh, completed a round, you can always just look at the, the uh, flap and know that you're at needle one, or you can just add a stitch marker if, you, if it makes you feel more comfortable and that way you'll know where round one um, always is. I'm, I'm sorry, your, your first needle. And you will continue this, de the decrease based on the pattern and I will meet you back at the knit two together at the end. So now we're back and we are down to the last decrease, knit two togethers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and move, remove the stitch markers as I do so because the last line of the pattern we are going to weave, the, we're going to weave the uh, yarn through the remaining stitches and close up the top of the hat. Okay, so now we are done basically with our last decrease row and we are going to take our uh, scissors and we're going to cut the yarn and we're going to draw that yarn through the remaining stitches.
So now we have a hat. So basically we're going to take uh, the remaining yarn and we're going to weave in the end. So I would thread the uh, needle through the top of the hat, turn it inside out, and there is no rhyme or reason to weaving in ends. You just want to make sure that um, you go in and out um, a few times just to secure the ends and you should be fine. So I had a tail left over from where I cast on. So what I like to do for this particular hat, I like to just take that leftover yarn and just thread it through uh, the flap into the inside of the hat just to kind of secure that flap. The button will do that um, as well, but this just gives it a little bit of extra security. Grab the button of your choice. I had this wooden button uh, hanging around, so I chose it, but you can pick whatever button you want, anything super cute. And once you sew it on, your hat is complete. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I have enjoyed making it for you. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.